Hey, what's up everybody? This is Dom and today we are checking out the top five features found in OS X Yosemite. So this is a big deal for Apple in my opinion. It's the closest that we've seen iOS and OS X come together without actually merging and there are quite a few features here to talk about which I'm very excited about. So if you're not already, be sure to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this in the future and feel free to hit that thumbs up button as it does help out the channel a lot. So let's go ahead and dive right into the top five features found in OS X Yosemite. So the first thing we are taking a look at here is the design. And while this may not be as big of a design change as we saw between iOS 6 and iOS 7, there are definitely some differences happening here between Mavericks and Yosemite. All of the icons have been redesigned. We have a different dock bar at the bottom and just everything overall has a different look and feel to it. Even in the finder window, as you can see, the sidebar has a bit of a translucency to it and shows the background through it which kind of brings it to life and overall this theme is carried throughout OS 10 and I am personally a fan of it we even have the same battery on OS 10 as we do on iOS 8 and iOS 7 so that's just kind of a cool change there and I'm a big fan of the design going on here so next up we are taking a look at messages and you'd normally expect messages to primarily handle all of your iMessage conversations but in Yosemite it can also handle SMS conversations or text messages Normal text messages from your iPhone actually appear on Yosemite in the Messages app as well. So that is a prerequisite. You must have an iPhone in order for this feature to work, but it connects to your iPhone seamlessly without you doing anything at all. It just pairs up and makes the connection and allows you to send text messages through your Mac. So that is pretty cool and everybody that doesn't have an iPhone you can communicate with on your Mac instead of those that just have like an Android device right here. So if I send myself a text message from the HTC One M8, you can see that it appears on my Mac and that's actually going through my iPhone and then being routed over Bluetooth to my MacBook, which is a very cool and handy feature and I will finally be able to communicate with all my friends that do not have iMessage on my Mac without having to pick up my phone. So a very, very handy feature. I can't stress that enough. I've been waiting for this for a while. And also, as you can see at the top there, as I move the window, we have the same kind of translucency up there on the top bar of the Messages app. Now, the next feature is kind of tied in with the ability to send text messages from a MacBook, but we can also place calls. So if we highlight a number, let's say in Safari and click on the little arrow next to it, we have the ability to call it using the iPhone or we can FaceTime it if we want to. But if we click on call there, we have a little pop up on the side here that says click call to make this call. And if you go ahead and do that, as you would expect, it will allow you to call this number from your MacBook. And basically what this is allowing you to do is place a call on your iPhone and route it over Bluetooth to your MacBook, allowing you to use the speakers and microphone from the MacBook to make the call. So a very handy feature, but again, the prereq it here is that you have an iPhone so keep that in mind moving along here we are checking out airdrop and Apple is finally allowing us to airdrop files between Macs and iOS devices so as you can see there in the list I actually have my iPhone pulled up under the airdrop window and I'm gonna give you a little demo of how this works here so over on my iPhone let's go ahead and open the photos app and as you can see here I have a nice little picture of my dog and if I tap on the share button on the side there you'll see my MacBook pull up under the airdrop section and if I I tap on that, I actually get a pop-up on the MacBook prompting me to save the file. So we have the options here to save and open, we can decline it, or we can save it, which I'm going to do. And as you see, it's dropped down there right into my downloads folder, and I can do what I want with it. But like I said, this does work the other way around. So I could transfer that same picture back over to my iPhone, and all I have to do is click and drag on that photo down there and bring it over top of the iPhone inside of the AirDrop window, and I will be prompted on my phone to accept or decline the file as you would expect and we can go ahead and tap on accept and it will transfer the file just like that next up we are checking out handoff which is a continuity feature like the sms stuff and the phone calls and this will allow us to resume working on a document that we started on one of our other devices as you can see here i have a new email pulled up on my iphone and that is actually reflected in the dock of my macbook so we have mail from iphone and if i close it on the iphone it closes on the dock it's pretty simple and 
and it works very well in my opinion and it's vice versa as well so if I started an email on my MacBook I could resume it on my iPhone or iPad or anything like that so let's go ahead and open it up here if I click on the mail icon there on the dock it will launch the mail app and allow me to resume writing this email on my MacBook Pro so very very helpful stuff going on here and it does work the other way around like I said so let's see here I have this website opened up on my MacBook and on my iPhone I have a nice little Safari icon there on the lock screen and if I swipe up and enter in my password it will open up Safari straight to that exact website that I had open on my MacBook finally we are checking out spotlight search and this has changed quite a bit from the drop-down menu that it used to be so if we click on the icon right there we we get this big search bar in the middle of the screen that's actually a predictive search bar that will pull results from your computer and from the web. So as you can see, I type in music app and it gives us some suggestions, maybe the app store or some other documents it pulls from the web and also all of the files that are on our computer that match that search term. So if I type in Steve Jobs, we actually get a Wikipedia result that pulls up and we have an audiobook on iTunes, the dictionary, and then other documents and files on my MacBook right now. So as I mentioned before, these are the same spotlight suggestions that you'll find on iOS 8 and I demoed in a recent video and if you want to check that out, I'll leave the link down below for you but overall it's pretty handy it's pulling results from the web and from your computer and those are all dictated by these options here within the settings app so you can customize it to your liking and maybe if there's too much stuff in there too much clutter you can add or remove icons by checking and unchecking those boxes but overall I'm a big fan of the new spotlight search on OS 10 Yosemite so I hope you enjoyed the top five features found in OS 10 Yosemite and if you did feel free to hit that thumbs up button as as it does help out the channel a lot. Also, be sure to subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Thanks again for watching everybody. This is Dom and have a great day. Wow.